What it do, E World, Criss Cross, and Y is back with another video. And today, I'm going to be discussing and comparing uh, two different builds on uh, the RZ platform. And basically, the reason why uh, I'm making this comparison is to validate what I always say uh, is the most important component. And that is, you should already know, what I always say, the battery. Alright, because when people uh, think about upgrading and modifying their PEVs, uh, the first thing they seem to think is relative or more important is the controller or the motor. And actually, all of them are important. But it's like I always say, it first starts with the battery. It doesn't matter what kind of motor or controller you have. If you don't have a sufficient power supply, you're not going to get much out of either of them. Now, on the flip side to that, whatever controller or motor you currently have is going to perform 10 times better just with the battery upgrade all right now uh to kind of prove this to you I, i'm going to make a comparison between my build and the engine and lord kirk and i'm not by any means trying to diminish these guys bills at all in fact i can't because uh they are legends in the game and the PEV world as far as they build. Man, them, them guys build it all. They build everything. And uh, they got some crazy builds. I mean, uh, I, I can't compete with them guys uh, really on, you know, that level that they on as far as uh, what type of equipment and stuff they have. But on just this particular platform I want to show you the difference between what they did and they upgraded everything motor controller battery and even painted the bike they they 100% customized the bike uh, and I did kind of the same but initially what I didn't upgrade was the motor not that I didn't want to, but just starting out, I didn't have uh, a new motor. So, just on the stock 3 kilowatt motor, I was able to achieve a decent top speed. Uh, I think actually the highest I was able to get was like 84 miles per hour. Alright, it was struggle to get there, but it got there. Um, so... Let me show you their build first. Uh, let me get this uh, on the right scenes here. Now, this is his bike. That, but today, I'm going to show you guys the smart way to actually buy one of these. It's a pretty cool bike now, and it did not cost very much to get it. So, today, I'm going to show you guys how to get one of these things for yourself the smartest way possible. Now, that's not an RZ, but all of the Chinese uh, electric motorcycles are pretty much the same bike. I mean, that's exactly the same bike that I have. Uh, and in this picture, uh, I think that's the 8 kilowatt motor he has on there. Now, like I said, he put an 8 kilowatt on there. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to start from here and show you. What Great pack. We figured video. we wouldn't bring you guys along for that since you already showed it's already a video for you. Exactly. Check it out. But we do need to also, we need to start building this battery. This is the original battery pack. We took all the cells out, tested every single one. All they all their, tested good. All our capacities listed on the cells for you. When we tore it apart though. We had some remnants of the spot welding from the first build on there mm -hmm. still. Got to clean those off before we can design and put this new one together. All the upgrades actually came in um, that we're expecting. I still do need the rear tire for the wheel. But we got our 8,000 watt motor. We got our controller, Kelly controller here. We also finally got this charger like two and a half months out. Okay, so I basically just wanted to show you uh, what they were using. Uh, 
a battery that uh, Kurt built. So he built his own battery, and uh, here's some parts of it now. So is this one in the center, and this one here, and all of the red cables are gonna come together. I'm gonna snip them off and crimp them to the two gauge. The cables inside of here are gonna carry this. So basically, that's a pretty big battery. All of them combined together, they have they have a sufficient power supply. However, as you can see, uh, he's just using nickel strips, no copper. So uh, current flow is gonna be a little limited. But when you have that many combined together they're still going to have a sufficient sufficient amount of current flow just because of how many cells it is and them all being combined but he could have did better obviously using some copper he could have got more but uh yeah so let's jump along to uh an LED, it's just a T10 bulb in there. I got lots of LED T10 sitting around. We're running the speakers on a 24 volt system. So we got a second DC to DC buck converter. We'll probably just stick that in here. So then we'll just have to connect it up. And the speakers are getting installed on the fairings right there. And so I'm... So as you can see, uh, they customized the whole bike. Now I'm gonna go ahead and jump straight to uh, his speed run. Let's take a look at that. That pulls. We're at 70. I don't think we're climbing any higher. Again, there's a heavy wind. You can, <laughs> you can hear it. All right, I think that was a fair test right there. Let me let me get off to the side of the road. So anyway, uh, I have it at the right part, but eventually he was able to get the 73 miles an hour, which is pretty good. Um, however, uh, 83 is better, and I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you my run. Uh, a couple of the runs and remember this and I must keep stressing this part this is with a stock 3 kilowatt motor so uh, imagine had I upgraded the motor at the same time like they did and put you know even an 8 on there but you know I'm putting a 12 on here now but for right now in these clips this is a three kilowatt motor, the one that it comes with. I don't know where I'm at this clip. So I'm getting on the highway. Yeah, with a three kilowatt. How about that? And that's GPS speed, by the way. It's GPS. So, man, a wheel speed sensor shit. That's GPS. Now I don't think in this video I pushed, I kept pushing it. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I think in this one I pushed it a little, a little more. The hell was I listening to?
think I was coming up on a car. Now, my 80 was like his 70. Once it got up around 80, that was, that's like at the end of the line. Now, like I said, I did manage to squeeze an extra three, just like he did. But uh, it was on another video, and I had to stay in it. I'm um, getting off it right there. But, uh, yeah, eventually it crept up to 83. But, uh, like I said, not so bad with a 3 kilowatt motor. Um, and let me, let me go back to the beginning of this video so you can actually see that this was with the stock motor. I cut the music out so uh, it wouldn't get copyright. You see that? The stock motor right there. Now, BAC 8000 and my battery, but 3 kilowatt motor. Now, I know a lot of guys right now, and the RZ is a heavy bike. Remember, this is a heavy bike, and I'm a heavy guy. But there's a lot of guys right now uh, running bigger motors that having a hard time getting a 70. And I keep trying to tell them, man, uh, you know, I always ask them, what kind of battery do you have? And uh, you can see right there on the GPS, it always uh, keeps the top speed locked in, uh, you know, with, uh, and I, I talk about the acceleration not being that great, but uh, I think right, I think I passed this car, we actually see, it's, it's, it's not, crazy but it got some decent acceleration I think when I got an opening I was able to pass it if I can remember maybe not and this is the yeah I think I I'm going around this guy I decided to go around Okay, yeah, right here I speed up. So, like I said, not not crazy acceleration, but enough. Enough to do a pass. And uh, enough to get the eight. But anyway. Uh the main the main thing I'm trying to to get over in this video is uh that is because of a good battery great controller as well but that controller needs that battery now imagine my setup my battery and and my controller with a big motor at the same time so obviously it should go beyond 80 miles per hour easily it's not going to be crazy but who knows it uh it should do like the beats and get up around that three digit mark on the right yeah i should be able to do it easy on the rz because i actually can get on the highway problem with the beast is i was always trying to do a speed test on the regular road so uh and it was it was limited to where I could do runs at with the beast but on the RZ I got tags on it I can get on the highway and I can open it up and show you what you can actually do on 72 volts and that's the other thing you got to remember this is 72 volts now uh, you know people cheat I could have always cheated and went on higher voltage and been doing higher speeds and saying I'm on 72 volts but uh, no this is 72 volts and um, is what it is but with no voltage sag and some good cells great efficiency and uh, no bottlenecks 
that's what you can achieve on 72 volts higher than 80 miles an hour and you know I, I, I say this and I try to I try to show people and tell people all the time because I always I always get I keep getting the same questions how come I come I can't and I mean you got to eliminate those bottlenecks man you anything that's causing voltage sag or impeding your current flow is going to hold you back you know you got a you got that circuit breaker in line you got to get it out of there you going through the BMS that's, uh, you know, limiting you to 100, 150 amps. You got to get it out of there. But, I mean, bypass it. But you got to make sure your cells are capable of, uh, listen, there's no need to bypass a battery if the cells and the pack, the way it's built and everything, isn't capable of producing more amps. Reason why people bypass is because they have a pack with great cells in it and it's built right that can output more than what the BMS is. So if you had a battery that's capable of five or six hundred amps and you got a two hundred amp BMS, obviously you want to bypass that because you want all of those amps that's just sitting there not being used all right bms is normally for protection for an inferior pack so you you're not overworking cells that aren't capable all right but that's what bms's do they limit the current flow because it needs to be limited on a pack like that when you put a 400 dc line amp controller on a battery that is only capable of making 100 150 amps it needs that bms so you don't send that pack in a thermal runaway that's what causes cells to overheat pulling too much current or trying to make more amps than they're capable of delivering all right if you got samsung cells in there and they only designed to put out 10 15 amps and you trying to pull 40 50 amps from those cells you're going to have a hell of voltage sag for one and those cells are going to get super hot and when they reach that temperature uh beyond that threshold thermal runaway that's when they catch on fire all right so do not bypass a pack that's not capable all right and if you do have a pack that's capable, make sure the BMS is capable if you're going to run through it. Uh, and like I said, try to eliminate those bottlenecks. And I know I repeat myself, but you got to remember this is unscripted. Talking off the top of my head. Alright y'all, that's it. Uh, stand by and stay tuned for when I come out with this thing, with this new motor. We're going to see what it does then. On the same system. Peace.